Hi everybody, my name is Katherine Finnerty and I'm a master's student here at Lindenwood. And with me today is Dr. Sweeney, who's in charge of our sports management program in the Plaster School of Business. Dr. Sweeney, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for doing this series. I think it's great and I'm happy to be here and to talk about the sport management program. Perfect. Um, what makes having a degree in sports management from Lindenwood different than from other schools? You know, my answer, um, if I can, I'll start by saying um, what makes Lindenwood sport management offering so unique are some of the some of the reasons anyways are the reasons why I chose to work here at Lindenwood. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my seventh year now here um, and my 14th overall working in sport management in mm -hmm. some capacity in the university. And this is the third institution, the third university that I'm working at as a sport management professor. Mm -hmm. Right now in this country, first of all, sports is a big business. It's a 500 plus billion dollar industry. Wow. And to support that industry, many universities offer sport management degrees. There are over 300 programs now across the United States. The important thing, or the difficult thing rather for students, is that um, not all of these programs are created equally, right? Some have much more value than others. Right. But it's very difficult for a student to choose, or to understand even how to make a choice, to understand what those factors are. Mm -hmm. And so this question that you have strikes at the heart of that. Um, I came here, I chose to work at Lindenwood first and foremost because the sport management program is situated in a school of business. Not all programs are. Many programs find themselves in colleges of education, uh, in um, uh, professional studies, in hospitality and tourism management, even in, in exercise science or science programs as well. Uh, what makes a sport management so valuable in a, sport, in, a, in a business school is the fact that all of the students take those same foundational core courses as every other business student. Mm -hmm. So they're taking economics courses and finance courses and marketing and business law and analytics <laughs> and all of the courses um, that every other uh, student in the business school are taking in all the other majors. So mm -hmm. what this means is, is that by the time they end up taking most of their sport management courses, they have a great foundation in business. This allows us to do really cool projects um, at the junior and senior level with students, as opposed to teaching them the basics, as opposed to right. teaching them what um, uh, a marketing plan is mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. So that's one extremely valuable uh, aspect, uh, 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 valuable component of the program here at Lindenwood is that it's in a business school. Mm -hmm. Uh, different in, the second one is different institutions have different profiles. Some institutions are heavily researched focused. Okay. Others perhaps are more balanced. Mm -hmm. Lindenwood falls into the second category. We're more balanced in our approach. And what I mean by that is many institutions pay their professors to primarily focus on research. And what that means is those professors are really only in the classroom, maybe in one class a semester. Oh. Uh, or two at most. Most of the courses that undergraduate students will, will have are going to be with other students, with doctoral students mm -hmm. who teach them. Uh, while that's a great opportunity for doctoral students to cut their teeth in the classroom <laughs> and gain experience, it's probably not the best for students who um, research shows that the success they'll have later on in part is due to the relationships that they have with faculty members. And so uh, in those other institutions, they might not have those same relationships. Here at Lindenwood, we adopted a balanced approach to research and teaching. Mm -hmm. Our faculty, myself included, are paid to be in the classroom. And so we'll teach four classes a semester, right? Mm -hmm. We'll advise students. So we have the opportunity to forge those relationships with students to help guide them in their careers. Um, uh, along with that, one, another aspect um, that's, that's very important uh, for students um, to know is the geographical location of the school. So Saint, uh, Lindenwood is situated in the St. Louis metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. uh, when I said earlier that sports was big business, it's a $500 billion industry, one of the largest industries in the U.S., what that industry is comprised of those who participate in sports and those who watch sports. Right? And so when we think of the diversity of, of, of the sports industry and the opportunities that are available for jobs 
they're situated primarily or concentrated in larger metropolitan areas. Right. The, the, um, the doers, the participants, they uh, <clears throat> are, are in fitness centers, they're in gyms, they're in uh, recreational sports, youth league sports, on beer league sports, mm -hmm. right? The watchers, they are the ones uh, who are attending professional sporting events. And when we talk about professional sports, we're talking about ticketing and media rights and merchandise and s corporate partnerships and sponsorships, which involve the business community. And those things also happen in metro major metropolitan areas. St. Louis is one of those areas areas that has a vast offering of, of sports, right? right? And so that provides a lot of opportunities for our students uh, as volunteers during their studies, for internships, uh, for informational interviews, for job shadowing, for um, inviting those professionals in to talk to, to, talk to our students, yeah. uh, to present to our students. <clears throat> so our students are able to get experience while they're studying, as well as grow their network. Uh, so those are three really strong aspects of why you might want to choose or one might want to choose a Lindenwood Sport Management degree as opposed to another uh, institution. That's really cool. Very cool. Um, Lindenwood also offers a management program. How does sports management kind of differ from regular management? That's an age-old question and one, that, one that's, that our students constantly grapple with and one that I see our current students grapple with, the ones who are here. Do I take a sport management degree? Do I just do a regular business degree? Recruits, uh, students who, who, who come and find our program out, ask us the exact same questions. First thing is, a sport management degree at Lindenwood is a business school degree, mm -hmm. right? And just for the reasons I talked about, all of the core courses that these students are going to take are the same ones that a marketing major might take, uh, that a finance major might take, or that a business admin student might take. Right. The difference is, is that the degree itself <coughs> prepares students uh, for careers in the sports industry. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. Yeah. Um, Instead of just taking a regular economics class, a sports econ class might involve issues related to um, economic impact analyses and the value that hosting a major event uh, might have for a region. And so why do we host events? Why do regions host events? Why do we have the St. Louis Sports Commission? Their job is to bring in events um, to increase tourism so that people will spend more money here. Right. Um, Salary caps and, and league finances aren't discussed in a regular economics class. They're discussed in, in, in a sports econ class, right? Important issues to know. If we move over to sports marketing, um, which is a, an area of interest of mine, mm -hmm. uh, the marketing of sport, particularly professional sport, is so unique as compared to regular marketing. And I mean that as a sports product. In what other industry, for example, do you have a product where if it fails, people will still purchase it and still consume it, right? Not many. Yeah, so when, I, when you got in your car this morning and you turned it on, you weren't praying, I hope it turns on, <laughs> I hope it turns on. If a few times in a row it doesn't turn on or it doesn't you know, work, mm -hmm. uh, if the quality isn't good, you're probably going to seek an alternative. Right. And that's true across the products we consume. However, in sport, if we win half of our games one year, or less, mm -hmm. you're still going to cons you're still going to buy tickets. You're still going to watch on TV, and you're still going to purchase merchandise, even though the product fails right. fifty percent of the time at least. So what's going on there with respect to the relationship that the consumer has to the sporting uh, event or to the team? Yeah. The psychology of the decision making and and, and 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 the psychological attachments that consumers have are different when it relates to the sports product. Mm -hmm. You don't get that in a regular marketing class. Certainly. One other example, a business law class versus a sports law class, right? In sports law, you might cover such issues as compliance in, in NCAA institutions, right? You yeah. won't cover that in business law. Facility liability issues are great. Partici sports happens in facilities. Mm -hmm. So you have the doers who are doing sport, 
uh, in a facility, there's premise liability issues that have to be discussed and so forth. In professional sport, we'll cover in sports law issues such as collective bargaining agreements, the relationships between uh, players associations or organized labor and, and the leagues and the impact that has uh, on, on, on the product and, and how it's disseminated towards to, 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 to consumers and fans. So these are issues that you will never cover in a regular business class. Right. The other thing is industry more and more, perhaps if we had this conversation 20 or 30 years ago, uh, the difference it would be hard pressed to um, to make between the two degrees. But now we have sport management uh, uh, graduates working at all levels of sport, from the highest levels of management on the way down, and they very much see the value of a sport management education mm -hmm. as it relates to these uh, finding success in, in, in the industry. So, very cool. And then, if you, if I were a student, a sports management student, or a prospective sports management student, what piece of advice would you maybe give me, um, either? For, like for my education or outside of that? So sports, we said, is a $500 billion industry. Yes. That means it's pervasive in society. Mm -hmm. What that means is that a lot of people organize their lives around sports, doing or following sports. A lot of people love sports. You know, when I was a kid, um, we would fight over reading the newspaper. And the <laughs> large, I know, right, it's so quaint. <laughs> The largest section in the newspaper is the sports pages, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, but it's no different today. It's a different media. But you know, we, when we progress to, to television, we have specialized channels. We have ESPN one through 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 eight. Yeah. We have specialized channels, uh, stations, networks devoted to to golf, devoted to tennis, devoted to hot. Every sport has its own station that offers 24-7 coverage of that sport. Mm -hmm. The explosion of social media, you know, typically your sports pages are, are your sports sites uh, are, are the ones that garner the most uh, uh, views and hits and so forth and likes. Mm -hmm. So sports is pervasive. That means a lot of people love um, sports, they follow sports, they watch sports, they do sports. Where that also impacts is people that want to work in sports. You do not need a sport management degree to work in sports, right? It's not. It's not a barrier. A degree isn't a barrier to entry like it is in a um, uh, uh, in the legal field or the medical profession where you're not practicing medicine or well, you shouldn't be practicing medicine <laughs> if you don't have a medical degree. Same thing for law in sports. You don't need a degree, right? Um, so you're facing a lot of competition for those jobs in sports. A lot of people want to work in sports, mm -hmm. degree or no degree. Sports is attractive and it's a big part of who they are and their identity. People love sports. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a degree in sport management and you want to pursue a career in sport management, and I should probably look at our viewers here, it's not enough to love sports. A lot of people love sports. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what you're getting into and why you're doing it, right? Um, it, it's, it's a very satisfying profession, uh, but you have to work really hard at it. You have to do the right things early and throughout your college career to position yourself to succeed. You also have to be aware of, um, because there's so much competition, yeah. you also have to be aware that sports happens Sports is leisure, it's recreation, it's entertainment. When do people recreate, engage in leisure, and want entertainment? When they're not working. So sports happens outside of normal working hours. So you have to prepare yourself for a career that's going to be in the evenings and on weekends. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, you have to work during the week too, <laughs> to prepare for evenings and weekends. So the hours are long, the hours can be grueling and an understanding that it's not just the games that are going on, that there's work involved uh, and that it can be grueling. If you understand that and you're willing to accept it, then it can provide a, a very valuable uh, and meaningful career for you. So uh, I guess the advice would be really passion, hustle, and grind. If you have those three elements, then you're well-suited for a career in sport management and well-suited for this degree. Very cool. 
thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I, I love your answers. They're... The pleasure really was all mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, to all of you out there, clearly sports management is something that you can get into. Um, check it out at Lindenwood.